Hello, I'm Sophia Lou and welcome to my channel. Hello guys and welcome to this week's Sketchbook Sunday. In case you didn't know, Sketchbook Sundays is a series of videos where we'll just be drawing and talking in real time with topics or discussions set by you guys. As always, the poll for the next week's topic is going to appear in the top right hand corner so you can vote for your favourite there or if you do have any suggestions, leave them in the comments section down below. Today's topic is the discussion of finding your art style and how to achieve that. This is quite a fun topic to talk about so we'll be going that into deeper discussion. Today's sketchbook I'm using is a Moleskin Art Plus sketchbook. I'll be giving my final thoughts on this when I do a sketchbook tour, which should be seen as I really don't have that many pages left in this sketchbook. So for now, I want you to grab a drink, grab your pencils, and if you do any art, make sure to tag me on Instagram and or Twitter. My links, as always, are down below. You can find me under Sephira Lou under any of these links. So for now, grab your sketchbook, grab your pencil, and let's discuss. So today's topic is finding your art style. Now the fun thing about this is there isn't an easy way. As with last week's discussion, there isn't an easy way for you to magically find an art style. Art styles develop as our influences change and your art style does develop. Um, you tend to draw influences from lots of different things and it can be very interesting how your influences change and develop over time. Now, if you had seen my first day's video, which I'll link here in the top right hand corner, uh, you'd see I my style changed from 2008 to 2018 and how my work has developed over time and how I've developed as an artist. This is interesting because I find that your style develops because you as a person have developed. You have changed, you have undecidedly when you are drawing, you take on different influences from lots of different things. For example, I was very, very influenced by anime and manga style and I still am heavily influenced by that today. I find it it's uh, a core part of my work and how my style has developed. Obviously my tastes have changed, I wouldn't say they've really changed, but I'd say that my style has changed a lot as well. So if you've uh, seen the first day video, you would have seen that I was very heavily influenced by anime and manga, and still to this day I still have a lot of anime and manga tropes in my art world. But what has changed has been how my work has been influenced by other artists. So for example, I would say at the moment my art style is very influenced by Art Nouveau, Arthur Rackham and older um, styles of illustration. I'm very interested in storybook style illustration and that's because I want to be a storybook illustrator. That is my dream job now. Whereas if you'd asked me when I was 18, the only job I ever wanted was I wanted to be a manga artist. I was obsessed with manga and um, comic books and I thought that this was the way that my art style was going to go. I saw that other people had been successful as manga artists in the UK and I thought, do you know what, that's what I really want to do. And I'm glad that I did that because it meant that my style did develop over that time and I learned things from doing that style. But the problem was I was only fixated on being influenced by manga artists and it meant that my style didn't really grow for the longest time. Yes, I developed, as in my work developed, I developed, my style developed, but it didn't develop as quickly as it could have because I was only taking influences from one pool. So my suggestion, as always, is if you are going to want to, if you do want to do illustration or if you do want to do anything like that in the job industry, is if you want your style to change or if you want to see a difference in your work, don't just take influences from one pool. Even if you want to be a manga artist or even if you want to be a children's book illustrator, you can't 
just take influences from one pool. You should take diff uh, influences from lots of different pools. Now, obviously, as you grow as an illustrator, as we all grow as illustrators and artists, we do change. That is a matter of fact. Um, styles change, artists change, people change as they grow. So your style is going to develop over time. So do not feel like massively worried if your work isn't going in the direction that you want it to. It's going to develop whether you like it or not. Your work is going to change because you as an artist change. If you go back and look at some of the, the illustrators that you admire and that you follow, you'll notice that their style has changed over the years. Whether or not that's consciously or subconsciously, they've actually changed and developed their work. And this is simply because people's influences change. No matter what show, animation, uh, book, comic, um, the artists that you admire, no matter what work you have been inspired by, your work is going to change and develop over time. And this is just because this is who you are as a person. You change your tastes as you get older. Um, uh, well, not really as you get older. Uh, the more you draw, your tastes kind of change because it's influenced by what you do. Now, some people may say, oh, but all I'm doing is copying. All I'm doing is um, taking influences from what I'm inspired by and then applying them to my work. I'm going to say this, everyone starts off by copying their favourite artists. It's no, it's, it's not a surprise. When you're influenced by say a favourite Disney film or an animation that you grew up as a kid, you would always draw those characters. I spent my childhood practically drawing Pokemon and Cardcaps of Sakura because that's what I was inspired by. That was the shows that I wanted to be. And then as I got older, I was like, well, I want to make characters for these shows. And that's where people start making their OCs and developing stories and this, that and the other. So as you do grow with your artwork, your style changes because you're growing. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, don't feel that you are not learning anything every time you draw because you do learn every time you draw that nose is way too high um, but every time you're drawing you are learning you are developing you are changing um, and the only way to if you are wanting to develop a style or develop something that you are interested in or something that you'd really like to do I would say like don't get too hung up in finding your style because that's gonna happen, it's gonna develop, and it's going to change, um, because you change and you develop as you grow. So I hope that kind of helps, and I hope that people don't get too upset that their style hasn't been found straight away, because it is something that does eventually happen. It's, it's not something that's gonna develop straight away. And I will say that if you are looking at developing a style and what would be easily recognisable as your work, I would probably say the best way to achieve that is experiment. Try out lots of different styles, try out different things to see what influences you. Try out different mediums. Some people tend to go for a more painterly style, some people tend to go for a comic book style, realism style. And not one, one of these is like a style that is the best because there isn't one style that is the best. Everyone develops their work in different ways. Some people excel better in realism and some people excel better in cartoonism or uh, like animation styles or anything like that because as your work grows, you grow. So I hope this kind of like helps you think about what, what direction you would take your work in. I know what my influences are and I you try to apply those influences to my work because I know that's how my work is going to grow and how I'm going to develop as an artist. The more I do, the better my work's going to get. The more I draw influences from, the better I will develop my work. And that is just how I'm going to grow as an artist. There are things that I want to improve on and there's things that I will improve on as the years go by. But I'm not too hung up in making sure that I improve on things straight away because I know that as I grow, my work's going to grow as well. So 
Please don't get too upset if your style isn't where you want it to be now. Nothing's achieved overnight. You are going to get better as an artist. Every time you draw, your work grows. Every time you do something, you grow as an illustrator, as an artist. And this is what we do. We grow and our style develops as we develop as well. And who knows, maybe someday people will be influenced by your style and what you do and they will be using you as inspiration because you're the person that didn't give up. And it's okay to have more than one style. You don't just have to have one style as an artist. Even the greats who have done so much work in the animation industry or the illustration industry, yes, they have a distinct style, but that doesn't mean that they don't experiment with other things. Like one of my favorite artists as a kid, Quinton Blake, does some of the most, he does some like really beautiful realism studies, which you would not associate with his work. And he does that because he enjoys that. There's lots of different artists who have studied different things and try and keep their mind fresh and apply it to their work so that even though their style stays distinctive, that you can recognize what they do and understand how they've drawn influences. Don't be afraid to experiment and use that in your work and make yourself a better artist by not being afraid to try out different things. One of the things I'm actually very excited to do when I do this sketchbooks tour, uh, tour is to show like how I sometimes experiment with my style because I do and it's, um, I can show you some of it in here. For example, I have like different styles that I do experiment with. I sometimes play around with like more realism and I sometimes play around with like studies and tr play, play around with different materials because that's what I enjoy doing. It's a nice way to see how your work can grow and how you can develop as an artist. So even though I didn't really get much drawing done in this piece, I got something down at least. It's a little sketchy, but it's a little Marie and Prickles. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And I hope it's helped you a little bit. Don't get too hung up in finding your perfect style because it will develop. Experiment, have fun with your work because art isn't anything without you having fun. So I hope you have a wonderful day and remember if you've done any drawing, leave, uh, like make sure to like, tag me on Instagram or Twitter or you can leave links down below, I'm fine. I'd just be interested in seeing what you do. Remember to have fun with your art, draw as much as you can and just stay creative. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you're missing any of my videos. I do post two to three times a week. I try and post as often as I can. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and as always folks, stay creative. <laughs>